Well, this is the moment that a lot of people inside and outside the stadium have been waiting for. I've noticed that noticeably over the past uh, five minutes or so, the seats have filled up. To see this Wigan side, Robinson, Twigamala, Afire, Paul, Edwards, Farrell and Quinnell, unchanged in the first round. Harlequins have Allison, Pickup, Watson, Francis, Walsh, O'Leary and Wright. And it's going to be Wigan who will get the game underway. Sean Edwards goes for a deep kickoff. And Darren O'Leary, the man who spins the ball across the face of his own post, first of all. It's now with Allison. The Harlequins running at Scott Quinnell. The ball goes to ground. It is picked up by Wright. And a great break coming in here now. Good pace. Super pace. And I think that they are going to score here through Richard Francis. It's first blood to Harlequins. And Wigan then had no answer to the pace of Richard Francis. A super try and a great start for Harlequins. Yes, indeed. I was surprised the kickoff went long. It gave Harlequins the ball. Wigan did not challenge for it. But once Francis got through that gap, he saw, you can see the try line behind him. He came from so far back. But he got through the early tackle and then his pace did the rest. And really nobody closed him down at all. And it's a super start for Harlequins. And I suppose it'll just say to Wigan, right, you've got a game on. Nobody closing him down at all. Robinson came across towards the end. But even he gave up the chase. And Francis didn't quite coast him, but was comfortably in. Well, that has lifted the people inside the stadium. And so too has the successful conversion attempt. Nick Walsh with the extras and Harlequins lead by seven points to nil Harlequins who beat Gloucester 36-5 in the first round Wigan they came in with a huge win under their belts as well and another deep kickoff Quinnell was after it Allison got a, the ball patted away and this now is Chris Wright into the arms of Martin of Fire support arrives eventually from Andy Farrell but the referee will call it all back he has blown the whistle the players haven't heard it he's blown the whistle for a penalty is it Jamie? yes it's a penalty down here what he's ruled is the play is still going the touch judge on the far side is doing nothing about this the touch judge to the world to the pitch and said stop playing guys this is just wasting everybody's energy on both sides for the touch judge on the far side is standing at absolutely nothing which is ridiculous well, Harlequins thought they were in for their second try, but it looked like it's the use of an elbow, perhaps. That was the signal from the referee, and it was by Quinnell in the back of the Harlequins player. Straight from the kickoff, Quinnell going in with the use of an elbow. He blew the whistle, but it's now a cauldron of noise, Twickenham, and the slow hand clapping around the stadium. Nobody heard him. Nick Walsh restarts and Harlequins then back where they began. Great stuff again. And off goes Walsh down the touchline. Twigamal is after him, but that's the second Harlequins try. Well, they're on their feet now, all around us. It's a dream start for Harlequins against the red hot favourite Twiggin. Second try in the tournament for Nick Walsh. He's also kicked three goals in the first round. Well, Chris Wright, the architect, once again, Darren O'Leary. Two men get drawn, drawn to Darren O'Leary, and Walsh is no slouch to scrum off normally the 15-man game. Clear for his try, and Wigan can't get the ball at all. The Quinns know now that Wigan are going to kick back to them. But it's a dream start for Harlequins. You'll see it here. You'll see how two men get drawn towards O'Leary there. He slips the pass away superbly. And I can tell you, I've never known the Harlequins so popular at Twickenham in the Middlesex Sevens. It's quite extraordinary. Great try to Walsh. And he's winding the crowd up as well. And listen to the singing going round Twickenham because Wigan are behind by 12 points to nil. The conversion was missed. This time a high hanging kick off from Henry Paul. Quinnell underneath it. The ball is dabbed through past a fire but it only finds touch 
Well, the good thing from Wigan there was put out. He went out and challenged for the ball, made sure Harlequins did not get clean ball. Wigan must get possession somehow. They have now, courtesy of Quinnell to Edwards, but he was carried all the way by Watson. The referee has given Wigan the penalty. I can tell you that Wigan are super confident. We were downstairs just about half an hour ago, and the players are in buoyant mood. And they should be too, because Henry Paul is in a rich vein of form. And Henry Paul is going to pull back one of those tries right under the post. John Edwards telling Henry Paul to come on, get on with it. The time is ticking down. Quick conversion by Henry Paul of his own try. 12-7. Well, the first bit of ball they got, they made it count, didn't they? Paul with a handoff. No sweeper system employed by Harlequins, all up in one line. So no sweeper to try and get back to Henry Paul. But it just shows how dangerous Wigan will be when they get possession. 12-7 to Harlequins, the 99th try of the tournament this year, scored by Wigan and Henry Paul. This is Scott Quinnell, a bustling run, he releases the ball though, and Harlequins caught offside. Yes, and a bit of play in the ball, you see Quinnell going to ground, Harlequins player who tackled him played the ball, which you're not allowed to do. Wigan have the ball back then, this is Robinson. They've moved up, they've cornered Robinson. They'll have to release it. A fire is there to try and help him out. Boot comes in from O'Leary. Picked up by Henry Paul, the Kiwi, the magician pace from Paul. Oh, brilliant. Sidestep round O'Leary like he wasn't there. Cuts inside, goes through another challenge. Breathtaking stuff from Henry Paul. Second try and try 100 of the tournament. Super try from Henry Paul. Well, Quinns have put the pressure on, they've caught Robinson in possession, but once Paul picked it up, he didn't need the support inside, it was a great step outside O'Leary, and then Chris Wright comes across the Harlequins, and Paul goes off his left foot, Chris Wright manfully trying to get back, but you can see the support is all there, Edwards now comes into the picture, and Henry Paul really has put Wigan back on course. There's a great run, half the length of the field and more from Henry Paul. It's 12 points all at half-time here in the quarter-final. Seven minutes remaining then. 12 all the scores. The ball again hangs underneath it. Farrell passed it back into the arms of Quinnell. And Scott Quinnell tried to get the pass away. Nick Walsh intercepted though, but knocked the ball forward. Well, this was the break. You'll see Walsh got in between. Quinnell of the support player. Strum goes down. Edwards feeds. Ball shoots out. Henry Paul, the danger man, to Jason Robinson. Not seen anything yet of this fellow, Martin O'Fire. Now we might. O'Fire has got through the first tackler. He gets away from the despairing dive of O'Leary. And Martin O'Fire, he messed around in the first game, but he got Sean Edwards behind him then who pointed him and directed him behind the post and said, come on, get the ball down. Well, the first time O'Fire's got into space, he's made it count. I thought O'Leary perhaps dived a little too early. I thought if he'd gone a few more yards, he might have had a better chance for an ankle tap. But O'Fire then coasted and got a reminder, <laughs> we want the extra two. And they haven't got time to mess around like this. But once he broke the tackle from Chris Wright, there was only really O'Leary's, O'Leary's challenge to beat. And the despairing dive, and O'Fire then wandered his way to the line. Third try in the tournament. Wigan have the lead, 19-12. Certainly that opening burst from the Harlequins has shaken them from their lethargy, Jamie. Yes, no question about that, but it's forced them into playing their best rugby. That one's gone forward, so Harlequins get their foot in, and therefore, the first time for some time, Eddie, get the chance of possession. Just a converted try between the two sides. Wigan getting a big push on. Did you notice Andrew Farrell, by the way, went in as hooker then? The kick downfield. 
wrestling match between O'Fire and O'Leary. O'Fire releases the ball and O'Leary picks up a simple five points. Referee Sean Edwards goes to the referee to complain, but the referee will have none of it. And O'Leary, his third try of the tournament, wins back in with a chance. Well, O'Leary was miles offside from the kick. Aside from that, he chased it well. A fire once he was tackled, had to release. So O'Leary was quite within his rights then. You see how O'Leary stands up. He's actually put it forward anyway, a fire. Fair try. I think Sean Edwards was concerned that O'Leary was offside at the kick when it was kicked through. But the referee would have none of it. The conversion was good. The scores are tied again at 19 all. Henry Paul, that's too deep. That surrendered possession back to Harlequins. And they will attack from within their own half. Paul kicked though in turn from them. And Robinson picked up the possession, gobbled it up for Wigan. Goes to ground, not held, gets the pass away to Paul. Over the top it goes to Farrell. Farrell has got Quigamala outside him. There he is. And he's got a fire in space. And this is another cry for a fire. His second comes down off the knees and dives over. It looks like he might have hurt himself. A fire flat out. Looks like he is injured. Two knees jarred on the pitch. But he got the five points, importantly, for Wigan. Yes, indeed. It started from a poor kick from O'Leary. It gave away possession. A fire was never going to get caught from behind from Walsh, but Walsh kept on going, just got his ankles with a tap, and her fires just, just got him there. And you know, Jamie, I've got a feeling, looking at that picture, that Martin the fire is not perhaps as fit as we think he might be. He's only just back after a serious back injury, and when he went down on the knees, maybe that just jarred the spine a bit. Well, perhaps the two ankles going together too, I gather he's had some ankle trouble as well. But anyway, as you say, they're ahead again. Conversion is important, though. Done its way from Henry Paul, but it hasn't got the correct range. 24-19. Harlequins to kick off. Courtesy of Chris Wright. Wigan will be desperate to get the possession back. 24-19 ahead. Hanging kick. Quinnell's underneath it. Ball bounces to Edwards, out the back door he goes to Robinson, that was a brilliant pass and that was a super turn round by Robinson and that's going to have a chance as one of the best tries of the tournament so far Robinson with the try, but what a pass from Sean Edwards, under great pressure he flipped it out the back door yes indeed he did, but what Wigan have done well since those early frantic moments they've done the restarts really well this is the pass from Edwards wonderful pass and Robinson he can certainly beat many a man he can and once he's in the clear he's quick enough to go all the way Chris Wright once again manfully trying to get back to make the conversion a bit harder here is the conversion from Henry Paul and he finds the correct mark this time Blinding pass from Edwards, and once Robinson had beaten the cover, it was a try all the way. Look at this. Fantastic. 31 points to 19. Wigan in control of this quarter-final now. Battle was tackled, though. A little dab through by O'Leary. Henry Paul's after it. He picks up. He has the pace. Gets it away to Edwards, who thought about a kick, I think. Give it to Quinnell instead. Quinnell releases the ball to Quigamala, but he misses it. Watson dumps the ball over the top to Allison. Allison has got the support there from Pickup. And Ian Pickup gets the try. And we could be in for quite a finish. Well, once they regained possession, Harlequins, it was on. They had the numbers. Allison once again steps inside. He plays it. Should have given it. Robinson almost had him enveloped. But pick up just had enough power to get across there in the tackle of Paul. A 
and the conversion attempt has come back off the post. Chris Wright just missing by the thickness of the post. Well, if it gets put in play, this kick-off, Eddie, and Queens get possession, they have a chance to level it. Seven points the gap. Wigan 31, Harlequins 24. Henry Paul. Quinnell's after the kick-off. Misses the man. Oh, but intercepts the pass. Gets it away then to Farrell. Turn the ball back inside. Quinnell's still there. Twigamala. Twigamala bursts through, and that should be it. That should make Wigan safe. Twigamala with the try. Well, the restart was all important. The Queens had it initially. But well play Wigan. There are enough players there. Quinnell picks it up. There's a few walking wounded now for Wigan. Henry Paul coming off. Barcelona fire struggling. Trigamala with the try. That's the match winner for Wigan. The final whistle is blown. Henry Paul, by the way, limping off. And will need some treatments. Gary Connolly was going to come on. There he is to replace Henry Paul. And we might well see Connolly in the semi-final. But they're talking to each other and having a right old go Wigan but they are through nonetheless 36 points to 24 good quarter final yes without doubt the best game of this tournament so far we've all enjoyed it I'm sure you have too Steve what did you make of that Wigan really responding in the best possible way well they have to but you can't go without the football without doubt that was the best game we've seen today um, I was impressed with the way that the Harlequins played their previous game They've got the speed, and especially with Francis when they went away. But wasn't it great for the crowd? Absolutely yeah. tremendous to yeah. see the crowd respond to it. Even I was singing up. You know. <laughs> but it is the mark, isn't it, of a good side to come back the way they did? I mean, they weren't phased by those early Quinn scores. No, I, I think the crowd got behind uh, the Quinns, obviously. And uh, you could see Sean Edwards getting around there. He's a good skipper. He's been around mm. for too, long, too long to worry about things like that. He was saying, hey, come on. Yeah. And when they scored the first try, Henry Paul was just ambling along the score and, and, and Edwards says get on with it yeah well talking of Edwards we can hear from the man himself he's with Tim Abraham well Sean undoubtedly the game of the tournament so far yeah um, we came out a little bit cocker I've seen in change room was a very good I think um, a bit too overconfident but certainly don't have a chance 12 nil down did you think really you've blown it but they score again now you know we probably lost it here but the boys battled that well just a matter of going to ball in their rounds don't get a ball in their hands you know, we can do the damage but very complicated to go in the ball in your hand. And this was the game that really raised the roof. Tremendous atmosphere. Oh, it's awesome. I can't believe it's seven sad. The, the atmosphere in the stadium is just uh, fantastic. And it's great that rugby league team can play here. Now, is that a boost, obviously, now to the uh, future campaign? Well, I think he'll give it a kick up the backside because we realised the said was a bit too overconfident at the start. Great. Thanks for your time. All the best. Thanks.